happy Sunday everybody so this is my box of uh, Courtney paints or cozy paints now I'm a brand ambassador for Courtney she's an amazing paint maker and I absolutely love her paints um, decided to go back to one of my favorite compositions using her paints this is anthroquinone blue from Courtney it's an absolutely beautiful color if you like dark blues um, this is a good one to have in your palette. So I start off with some anthroquinone blue. I have not wet the paper beforehand. I'm putting the blue in at an angle. I'm going to hold up this uh, board at an angle so it allows the paint to just flow down. You don't have to be careful at all with this wash. You can do absolutely whatever pleases you. It's going to get covered up by some trees and such in later layers. So it really doesn't matter what the base layer looks like. I do know that this dries pretty light. So I usually try and punch up the pigment even in the very first wash. So that's what I'm doing now. Just having fun with it. Sometimes when I change up my brush strokes, I hit upon something new that I like and then I continue using it for a few pieces that on out. So just play uh, with your paints and your paper and your brush and see if you find something new that you like that you'd like to do again. I'm splat splattering some water. This is just clean water. I like the effect that it produces. It forces some backgrounds and um, in later layers it might even help you position your stars if you uh, choose to you know use some pastels to put in stars this would be a good place to start. Now I've moved on to using a color called forest green. This is uh, one of the darker greens I have from Courtney. Um, I'll show you the pan later. I've more than hit pan on this half pan of paint and that makes me really happy <laughs> so I'm just trying to put in a background um, layer of foliage I later put in trunks and branches and such um, just to make it look like a tree line if you've seen my other videos um, you probably already have seen a similar technique I was having trouble holding the paper down so You'll see me wrestle with it quite a bit. Just using a little more of the same green. This is forest green. establishing a pathway of sorts um, and using this color called passion flower uh, from Courtney's very first set of granulating botanicals if uh, you want recommendations on what paints to try first I would suggest you start off with the granulating botanicals it's an absolutely beautiful set there are three now uh, but the first one happens to be my favorite and continues to be my favorite so I don't put in a complete path. I just um, do a few dashes here and there, narrowing it as it goes further into the distance. Um, it's broader, closer to us, and it narrows as it goes away, thereby conveying some sort of depth. And this green you see me using now is olive green. So I tried the entire thing down with a hair dryer, and now I'm going back in to put in the second layer. I'm using some forest green, um, establishing some sort of a tree line. Uh, I'm being very loose with this. I had an approximate idea of what I was going for, but not an exact idea. So I'm just trying to establish a tree line in the distance. You use the side of your brush, uh, and if you flick it up quite fast, then you get those uh, beautiful dry brushing strokes. Now dropping in some anthroquinone blue. 
it's always a nice idea to add some blue to your tree line in the distance. Uh, cool colors tend to recede, so it pushes this whole layer back in at the distance. And now I'm going back in some, with some forest green. Just putting down the colors that I want to see for the background foliage and then to make things less abrupt um, I go back and blend things in um, you've seen me switch to a larger brush right now this is a size 10 round brush and with just water I um, go wet the area so all of the pigment that I've just put in has a chance to just blend in with the background Still blending things. I switch back to my size 6 brush and I'm dropping in more green. You could see some of it was drying in the foreground and by wetting things you kind of prevent those hard edges from forming. Now I've I'm just using my thirsty brush to mop up some of the water that's beading um, along the edges of the tape. Now I'm using a buff titanium type um, color. I don't quite remember what this is called from Courtney, but um, any color with some white pigment should do. If you have buff titanium on your palette, that's a great one to use. And then I go in and blend it out ever so gently. The plan was to put in a house um, in this piece. Uh, so I wanted um, the background behind the house to be lighter than what's around it. I felt like I'd lost some of that with the background I had already put down. So some, uh, you know, this is a way to kind of reclaim that light, go back in and use a color with some white pigment. You could also use bleed proof white, but I prefer a watercolor on my watercolor palette. Now I'm going back in with some anthroquinone blue straight from the half pan and I'm going to go make uh, some dots and dashes here and there um, all in an effort to kind of build up the depth. So adding darks around your lights is a great way to play up that light. Um, so I was just having fun with it. And then I noticed that there was a very harsh edge that was forming. So I cleaned my brush off and then uh, went in and uh, you know, with a not too wet brush, a, a slightly damp brush, I kind of allowed that edge to go away. So 
So that's my half pan of forest cream. Uh, I'm very proud of it. <laughs> I uh, buy a lot of paint, so it's not often I use up something to this extent. I do want to do more of it, and I'm in, I'm on no buy at the moment, so the sight of this half pan just makes me really happy. Going back in with some passion flower and uh, just picking up some of the same colors that I put down in the first wash, but just making them a little more intense in the second second layer. And now I'm using a color called Dusk, um, just to add some shadows to that middle layer of foliage that I have. just helps that level of uh, foliage to be grounded. Helps it look like it's not floating in the air as much. Once this is done, I go ahead and dry that entire layer. This is how it looks once the second layer has dried. Um, now it's time to put in the house. You could sketch out a house if that is easier or you could do what I'm doing and go straight in. So I start off with a little squarish um, piece and then with a damp brush I blend it out. And on top of that squarish piece I put a little triangular piece. So this would be the front of the house or the cabin in the woods. <laughs> and once uh, this is done, I put in a little bit off to the side, which would be a partial side view of the cabin. Blend that out as well so it's not sticking out. I try this off and next I go in and paint the roof. I'm using the color purple ochre for the roof. The color I use for the walls of the house is called plume and it's a beautiful separating color. It's another of my favorites from Courtney. This one's called Purple Ochre. I put in the roof and then add a chimney. And then I try things off. Now I'm using one of my favorite colors from Courtney. This is called Courtney's Grey. And it's a beautiful color to use as shadows. So I use Courtney's Grey. I've picked my shadow side and then I go in and put in the shadow. I also do it under the roof. And once I lay the initial color down, I go blend things out a little. Adding a little more Courtney's Grey. And 
and blending again. adding some shadow for the house this might get overtaken by subsequent layers so you might need to go back in and put some in the end Mopping up any bits that you don't like or the bits that you want to try quicker and now I'm going back in picking up more passion flower and adding a few details to the foreground because if you notice we've kind of lost the pathway that we put in and for this I'm using a round two And with around six and some olive green, I add a little more warm colors to the foreground. And here you see me blending it out. This again is olive green. I tried things off with a hair dryer and then I'm using a round two brush and the color passion flower to add more details to the foreground. You don't have to draw the whole path for you know your mind to tell you that it's a pathway. You can just hint that one. So now it's time to put in some uh, background trees. I'm not quite sure what color this is. This might be White Nights, uh, one of the colors from the granulating um, palette. So I'm using a rigor brush. Uh, I really like the ones from Roman Schmoll. And I'm using a diluted mix to put my background trees in. A rigor brush is a great um, thing to have um, and once you used it often enough it's so quick and easy to put in things like power lines, uh, rigors on a ship, thin trunks and branches off in the distance. There's so many wonderful uses for a rigor brush. So if you notice what I'm doing, I load the brush, I go in and put in some trees and I continue working even if uh, you know I'm running out of pigment and that way I can vary the values of the branches and the trees that I'm putting in and as a result with very minimal effort I, I get um, a, a nice feeling of depth. Feel free to use your fingers to mop things up. I usually do that to the ends of my tree trunks if 
they look like they're floating in the air then I go and dab at it with my finger uh, kind of blend that in so it doesn't stick out as much be nice and loose with these things they don't all have to go in the same direction they don't need to be symmetric make nice quick loose easy movements with your brush and you'll have some um, nice looking uh, tree line in the background this is bleed proof white I'm using a small brush around two uh, to splatter in some stars you could leave this till the very end I went ahead and did this and I was second-guessing myself I should have waited till the end because I was going to put in another level of uh, trees um, so this might have been a better idea to add at the very end but yeah um, don't worry too much about it if you time things wrong you can always go back in and add more if the stars are to be covered by another tree layer so this again is Courtney's gray I'm adding a few more shadows to the house now that the house is dried um, take note I'm not adding uh, every I'm not lining every bit of it I'm just making quick strokes uh, for the windows putting in a door and if you notice I'm going to make the windows slightly larger than I have them and that's because I wanted to go in and use my pastel pencils later to add some light so it made sense to make the windows a little larger than I had them and then I'm just intensifying the shadow at the base of the house with the same grey and blending it out just a little so it doesn't stand out so much so now this was done I went back to using my rigger and my um, almost done half pan of forest green and I'm adding some trees in the foreground this again helps give you some depth and it also helps you frame your piece not really planning this out just adding branches where I feel like things look empty making it slightly broader um, closer to the lower edge and then thinning it out as it goes up and this is a tree that's kind of peeping in from off the side And this is all real time so you can see um, keeping my brush strokes rather quick kind of helps me make these lines um, thinner and now I'm using um, a dark brown I don't recollect the name of this color um, but yeah just fading things up a little so it's not all green going over some of the branches that I'd already put down not worrying too much if it makes a new branch that was in there already So you can see the idea of depth that this conveys there are thinner lighter trees off in the back and you have um, more saturated trees in the front and this is my tin of pastel pencils um, these are the Stabilo Carpatello pastel pencils and this is what I like to use for adding light you could also choose to use um, gouache or you could use uh, a bleed proof white mixed in with a yellow watercolor um, or gouache mixed in with your yellow watercolor to do this but pastel pencils are a very easy way to do it and also to blend it out you just have to um, kind of use your finger so I'm adding a little light to all of the pathway and blending it out when it gets too much Now 
Now I'm using the white pastel pencil to add some smoke coming out of the chimney. Again, blending it out just so it doesn't uh, stick out too vividly. And I'm now using the black pastel pencil to add a few um, darks here and there. And adding some shadows in the tree line. Have fun with these pastel pencils. Just put down some texture where you feel like your piece is lacking it. And if, it fe if you feel like it's too much, then you can always use your finger to blend things out. And now with the buff tape titanium uh, color and my rigger, I'm um, adding a few um, highlights to my branches. Again, you don't want to study this too much. Um, quick, uh, decisive movements of your brush will end up looking nicer than very slow, methodical um, stripes. <laughs> but again, if this doesn't suit you and you prefer to be slow, if that's how you do it better, then please continue doing that. Now I'm adding some highlights to the house or the cabin right above the darkest darks or right by them. adding a little texture to the roof and the walls. You can tell for sure that this cabin hasn't been painted in a while. And now I'm using whatever is left on the brush to put in some highlights on the pathway. And using a round two brush, I'm using the same buff titanium to add a few more highlights. And that's it. It's done. Peeling the tape off. And now you have it, a cozy cabin in the woods.